Good morning, everyone. We just want to thank you for being able to wake up and listen to the message uh, that God has called us to preach this morning. That God has called me to share with you this morning. Um, as you may know, that is not the usual thing. We are not used to this, but I just say, please let us embrace with change. That is what change does. Let us pray. We approach as those who have not seen, those who believe in doubt and hope. We approach our God of life and love. Let us draw near, Father. Let us draw near to you, the God of love, the God who loves us. Loving God, we praise and adore you for your great compassion. For giving us new birth into living hope. The glorious truth of the resurrection astounds us. We pray that we never lose the wonder of what you have done for us. Of the wonderful and lasting inheritance you provide to us. As the disciples in the long room reached out and touched you. Let us reach out and touch you today, living Lord Jesus Christ. Let us feel your scared hands and feet. Let us feel your presence today as we are gathered here. Father, we know that without you we can't do anything. But with you we can do greater things. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to worship you. For allowing us to preach the word of God. For allowing us to hear the message. The living message. Which gives us hope. In your name I pray. Amen. One Peter. One. One two twelve. To God's elect, strangers in the world scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in which great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into, the, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith and shielding by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proven genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Through, though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets, who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, searching intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pouring, pointing when he preceded the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. He was revealed to them that were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. This is the word of the Lord. Morning again. Uh, today I want to share with you on the theme Great Expectations from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. And uh, I want to say 
This is really a great passage for all of us, especially during this time of coronavirus. Easter without expectation, without question, is the great event that has happened. That is the focal point of all history. Every time you write down a date, you are using the resurrection of Jesus Christ as the reference point. When you write down the year 2020, you mean 2020 years. From what? Well, you are obviously meaning 2020 years from the very event that we are celebrating today. The fact that the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. So it's 2020 years from that period. And that's what we are saying. But we still have to ask the question, why is Easter so special? Why do over one billion people celebrate Easter around the world every year? Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ showed that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. Because only he could have come back from the dead. But that still raises the question for this postmodern society in which we live. Jesus is alive? So what? <laughs> one of the two old disciples, the Apostle Peter, gives us the answer in 1 Peter 1 verse 3. All honor to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is by his boundless mercy that God has given us the privilege of being born again. Privilege of being born again. Now we live with a wonderful expectation because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have great expectations. The word expectation can also be translated as hope. Nothing should raise our expectations in this life. Our hope in the life to come more than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is what it is. Now, the New King James Version calls this a living hope. This is not an ordinary hope that we have such as I hope to win the lottery or I hope I can get a debt with Miss Universe. That is just wishful thinking. Well, we are talking about a living hope that never dies. We are told that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have the most prized possession in the world, and that is hope. That is very important for us to know. Someone has observed you can live 40 days without food, 80 days without water, 4 minutes without air, but not 1 second without hope. Easter gives us hope. Indeed, great expectations. So what it means, we can expect because of Easter. We can expect great things because of Easter. We can expect greater and greater future because of Easter. And that is important for us. I can expect God's purpose to guide my personal life. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. From the time you were born, God had a purpose for your life. You may not know it. God has never made anything without a purpose. Whether it is mineral, animal, or vegetable. We now know how nature has a balance to it. So that neither plants nor animals dominate the earth. Each feed off of the other. Each has its own purpose. That is what it is. Listen to this next statement very carefully. You were made by God. And you were made for God. You were made by God. And you were made for God. If you don't understand that, life will never make any sense to you. It becomes meaningless. Your birth was not your parents' idea. It was God's idea because it was God who gave your parents. You were created with a God-shaped hole in your heart that nothing can fill except a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I realize that we are living in a society that is trying everything to find that the purpose in life. You can try possessions, but you find that the eyes of men are never satisfied. You can possess the whole world. 
You can try popularity, but you'll find that not everybody is going to like you. You can try pleasure, but you'll find that pleasure is temporary. None of these pieces will fit the path of the purpose of your life. Why? Because you were created for a purpose. We really find this one passage of scripture in a single sentence. Why we all were born? You were born to be born again. In John 20, in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 it says, Recall these words of the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for holiness, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is what God wants. To give you a future and a hope. Your life will always be off-center, off out of kilter, and off-balance until you understand that God has a purpose for you and put you on this earth to fulfill that purpose. That is the very reason God gives us his word. And that is the Bible. The Bible is God's map for your life. It is blueprint for your existence. It all begins with a personal relationship with a risen Savior. Then you start your life purposeful journey. One of my favorite verses in all of the Bible is Psalms 128 verse 8, which says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. How is that all tied to the resurrection of Jesus Christ? If God can bring his son through the tomb of death, God can bring you through the troubles of life and accomplish his purpose for you, surely you will not die. Even of corona, you will not die. You will live. I, ex I can expect God's power to guard my spiritual life. Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In 1 Peter 1 verse 5. When you come to realize that Jesus Christ is alive and that he desires to have a personal relationship with you, it is not just to cleanse you, but to change you so that he can control you. And that is very important for us to know. You see, Jesus Christ can do for you what nothing else, no one else can do. He can not only change you permanently, he can change you eternally. He can change your whole habits. He can heal your hearts. He can help you overcome your hang-up. That is what Jesus does. He can give you the power to let go of guilt, to let go of grief, to let go of grudges. Only he can give you the power to stop doing what you should do and to start doing what you should do. He's the only person who can do that. You want to hear something even more incredible. The power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is available to those who have personal relationship with him. That power is available to every one of us. No matter who you are. That power is no we accept Jesus Christ. You get that power. It's not depend on your position. It doesn't depend on your status. It's given only to those who are children of God. And that is very important for you to hear. Ephesians 1 verse 19 20 says, I pray that you will begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Now notice that God's power is only available to those who have trusted in Jesus Christ. It's only available for those people. But once you surrender to the person of the resurrection, you then receive the power of the resurrection. That is why Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That is what I want. To know him in the power of his resurrection. That is very important for me to know. It is that power that keeps you safe and secure. The word for God here is a word that always means keep. Do you know that the word keep is that part of his castle into which people are under attack and run for survival? In Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. So we are safe when we run into Christ. If you ever doubt God's power, look at the resurrection. Because there is no greater power than the resurrection power. 
under heaven's lock and key we are protected by the most efficient security system available in all of the universe and that is Jesus Christ the power that can guide you the power the, the, the power that can protect you so you, you, you may not do you may hide anywhere and Jesus knows where you are You may try to escape people, but you cannot escape Jesus. You cannot. 2 Timothy 1 verse 12 says, I know the one in whom I trust. And I'm sure that he's able to guard what I've entrusted to him until the day of his return. If you are seated in an airport with your suitcase beside you, and you left a moment and go to talk with someone else, suppose you came back and your suitcase was stolen. If you went over to the desk and asked him for the agents to track down, for they could, they could not help you. The reason is, they were not responsible for your luggage because you were, not in, you were in control of it. And therefore, you would have no recourse in the airline. But if, on the other hand, you had checked in with the airline, and when you arrived at your destination and found it was not there, you have every right to ask the agent where it was. That agent would have a responsibility to look for it, to find it, and to bring it to you. The reason is the airline is responsible for what they have committed to it. But they are not responsible for what they have not committed to it. I remember one day, in 2016, in August, we were going for my brother's wedding. Only to find out as that we were going to the wedding that one of our suitcases was missing. And that suitcase had all the wedding clothing. And sight was so much among everyone of us. It was so much. We called the airline. And they said they don't know. And we told them that it's missing. Later on, they found that it was left in Kenya. And they sent it within that very week. In less than four days, it was at our doorstep. Why? Because they were the ones in charge. They were responsible for it, not us. When you commit your soul and your external destiny to God, he is the, then responsible to care for it. He is responsible to guard against uh, uh, guard it. He is responsible to protect it. He does it by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus will guard for your soul. I can expect God's presence to give me eternal life. Now listen to verse 4. For God has reserved a priceless inheritance for his children. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Now there are two things we are told in that simple verse. First, heaven is not for everybody. It says God has reserved a priceless inheritance for his children. <laughs> you see, to get into heaven, you have got to have a Reservation. That reservation can only be made in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is what you need. It amazes me how people think they can do their own thing, live their own lives, go their own way, call their own shows, and then just show up at heaven's door when they die and say, okay, God, I'm here, open up. If that's your attitude, you are either incredible arrogant or incredibly ignorant. And that is true. Only God's children are allowed in God's house. Not anyone. One thing we are told is this. Once you have become a child of God, you are guaranteed to get in. God honors every reservation made in the name of his name, his son, Jesus Christ. There is something different about this inheritance. Nothing can destroy it. Nothing can defile it. Nothing can displace it. 
is there. Do not be troubled. For in my father's house are many mansions. Jesus said those words. Why should we be troubled? If you are a Christian, do not be troubled. You are guaranteed for heaven. In case you are wondering whether or not you will get what is coming to you. Whether you will get this heaven inheritance, let me just share with you that we have already received part of it. In this part of it. In Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14 says, In him also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So we have it already. That word guarantee literally means a down payment. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, that living Lord comes into your life in the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit becomes the security deposit on your eternal salvation. It is the guarantee of God's presence which will give me eternal life. And that is very important for you to know as a child of God. If Jesus Christ is not risen from the dead, there is no, not one glimmer of hope for the human race. It is the most important event in human history. It is the one event that gives those who know the reason, Lord, have got great expectations. An expectation that the God who raised Jesus from the dead will take us to heaven as if we will put our trust in him. And that is very important. Let us cling on to our faith, to the hope that we found through the scriptures. Let us hold on to Jesus Christ who is the Alpha and the Omega of our life. Without him, there's nothing. Nothing. Totally, we have nothing. We are only what we are because of Jesus Christ. So have faith in Christ. Have faith in the resurrected Christ. I know, yes, you may have challenges with your faith, especially this period when we have the coronavirus. But in 1 Peter again, he's saying, we, are, we should not be afraid. We should not be even worried about what is happening. Because for those who are in Christ, they, they are protected. We are protected. Divine protection is of us. We are not worried. Because divine protection is with us. So I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, let us not be worried. Let us not be anxious. But have faith in the word of God. Why is you are there behind locked doors? Take your Bible. Read your Bible. Sing Christian hymns and songs on your own. Read the Bible. Share your faith with others. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you. God is there for you. If you have any doubt, ask Thomas. He had those doubts. And the Lord showed him. May the good Lord bless you as you continue to hear the word of God, as you continue to contemplate and meditate on the word of God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the places in the world that need your peace. Places where coronavirus continues to threaten the stability of the nations. Where people are dying in numbers. Families being wiped up. Economies become come to a standstill. Lord, bring your peace which passes all understanding. Give wisdom to world leaders, to presidents, prime ministers, 
politicians of all governments, that they may strive for lasting peace and true justice, not putting personal ambition before the needs of their people. We pray for those who need peace of mind, those who need healing from COVID-19, those weighed down by the stresses and strains of everyday life, or who suffer with anxiety, or are praised by worry and fear, for those who find it hard to go off things and simple trust. Father, we pray, show us your power. Yes, we know when the disciples were locked down. Lord, you come and stood among them and you said, peace be with you. They were filled with joy and rejoiced. You breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Even Thomas doubted as he was in there. But a week later again, you said, Thomas, tied your hands and felt your side. My God, my Lord, you are Lord in our God. We are not afraid of anything. Show us your power. Show us your power, Lord. Gracious O God, who hears the cries of the forgotten and sees those who are hidden, those who are lonely, those who are in despair, draw close to them, Father. We ask your loving kindness to surround those who are struggling with anxieties, doubt or despair. We pray that they may know your peace, we ask for your unfailing, powerful love to pierce the outshell of hearts grown hard. For those who had once whispered your name, but now seem unwilling to seek your face. We pray that your love may compel them to draw near to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen.